300 million visitors from around the world have entered the legendary doors of Radio City Music Hall, an Art Deco landmark jewel right in the middle of the city in the world, of New York City. And it's time for the National Football League Draft in 2008, presented by Sprint, right here on NFL Network. The path to the draft that we've been discussing for so many weeks has finally led to this moment when we'll find out who's going where in the NFL. Adam Schefter with the latest on the pit floor. What do you have, Adam? Rich, there is increasing speculation that at number four, Oakland, and number five, Kansas City, could be moving back in this draft, and New Orleans at number 10 is trying to move up. The target, I'm sure, would be Glenn Dorsey. Good afternoon, football fans. Welcome to the 2008 NFL Draft. As you know, the first choice belongs to the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> and I have that choice. With the first pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins select Jake Long, senior, Michigan. <laughs> and there he comes, Jake Long, the first overall pick of the 2008 draft, kicking things off here at Radio City Music Hall, an anchor of that Michigan offensive line ever since he stepped foot on campus in Ann Arbor, now getting a set to hold up the teal jersey of the Miami Dolphins for the first time in his now new professional career. 6'7", 313. You got to look at the arm length. 35 and 3 quarters. That's excellent. A 176, 10 yard dash. Anything under 18. Excellent. I think he's a Pro Bowl right tackle. He's tough. He's physical. On tape, I thought he struggled with elite speed. And in the NFL on the left side, you get elite speed 16 weeks in a row. And uh, Jake Long is holding up for the paparazzi here. You know this guy. He's got to. He's got to go earn that money now. You pay. You pay that kind of money for a left tackle, Mike. He's got to work out at left tackle, and you got to try to do that. He's got enough gifts, size, and speed, and measurables. He is a tough guy. He was a captain for a couple years over there at Michigan. But they got to start him off on that left side, and he got. The, and hopefully, he will be a left tackle because that's where you pay your big money, not so much at the right tackle. And Marshall, this is where we see that streamlined format of the NFL draft that Commissioner Goodell was talking about right here in play. Seven and a half minutes to go now on the clock <laughs> for the St. Louis Rams to choose number two overall. What do you think they should do? Long, Dorsey, or trade this pick if they can get a partner to pony up? When I think about it, Rich, I, I say they can't go wrong with either guy. Both of these players are the elitist type of players that's going to make your defense better. Dorsey, an interior guy, you put him with character, your defensive line get better. Long, you put him on the same side with character, your defense get better with Leonard Little on the other side. Leroy Glover, a guy that can teach those guys. Okay, with the second pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the St. Louis Rams select Chris Long. So there is the Long family celebrating. Chris joins Kellen Winslow, Brian Greasy, Anthony Dorsett, and Bobby Bell as sons of Hall of Fame players to be drafted into the National Football League. 6'3", 272, 32 and 5 8 inch arms. The 1'6 is more important than the 4'7'5. What he has, and you heard the coach talk about it, is great get off. He's got strong hands. Great quickness. That's the get off I'm talking about. But his motor is better than anyone I've ever seen at the collegiate level. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree when you're talking about Chris Long. The great motor, the intensity, but that gets lost sometimes. Make no mistake about it, he is a freakish athlete. I get tired of people saying he's an overachiever. He's an achiever. He's explosive, he's quick, he's tough. 
He will be an anchor of this team both on and off the field for the next 10 years, and he's the kind of guy that you win Super Bowls with. Yeah, he can do it all, not just rush the passer. He's very strong at the point of attack against the run. One other thing that this guy has that's hard to teach now, Marshall, is he bats balls down. He has a great knack for anticipating the throw. He goes up, he's good with his uh, hand-eye coordination. Well, Rich, the Atlanta Falcons won the stare down. Baltimore was attempting to get up to number two. They didn't make it. So now Atlanta gets to pick the player that they've been eyeing the past couple of days, Matt Ryan. It's a pick they've come to embrace. A lot of people thought it would be Glenn Dorsey. It will be Matt Ryan, the Boston College quarterback. And Adam, I have to give Thomas Dimitrov, the new general manager for the Atlanta Falcons, a lot of credit. I think he made the tough choice, not the easy choice. The easy choice with a new GM is to take a safe bet. Glenn Dorsey's a pretty safe bet. You plug him in day one, your defense is better. Now you're gonna wait for a quarterback. They take longer to develop, but he's the focus now of that franchise. The first round in 01. With the third pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Matt Ryan, quarterback, Boston College. For the eighth consecutive year, a quarterback's been taken in the top three picks of the draft, Mike, and uh, Matt Ryan is the first one off the board as expected. Yeah, and forget the measurables. Take them right off the board. I, I, you you got to watch the tape, see the off-the-chart intangibles. Good arm. He's sneaky athletic. The negative has been the interceptions. 19 interceptions. Trust me, that's a result of trying to make plays with wide receivers that can't get open. He will learn at the next level when and where to pull the trigger. And that will be the key for Matt Ryan. He's a smart guy. He'll learn a system fast. Chris Redman is the guy that's going to be their quarterback until Matt Ryan is ready. And you mentioned Peyton Manning struggling his first year. So did Troy Aikman. You take your lumps, but if you draft well and you develop a supporting cast, maybe this guy becomes the new face. What say you on this particular so uh, topic, Steve Mariucci? Well, I think Darren McFadden would be a great pick for the Raiders because a running game and a great running back is the quarterback's best friend. Jamarcus Russell is going to be their quarterback, and, and they like him a lot, and they're going to give him every opportunity to shine. He needs somebody to hand the ball off so they don't have to throw the ball 40 or 50 times a game. Uh, this guy is going to be a home run hitter. He's just the kind of guy the Raiders like. And Rick and Steve, it's very interesting to think about because last year the Raiders were sixth in the league in rushing, and that was without some quality wide receivers and offensive linemen. And now it looks like they could be headed in the direction of a running back again. Some speculation about Oakland dealing with New Orleans. That's not going to happen. New Orleans will try to possibly make a deal with Kansas City, though it's very tough to move up in this draft as we've seen from previous years. Glenn Dorsey's really attractive to me at this point. They were number 31 against the run last year. They were number 26 in points allowed. This is a team that has no presence inside. Tommy Kelly's a tackle end and end. I'm looking at this guy going, yeah, I don't think McFadden's a slam dunk here. I really don't. I think you got to be looking at Glenn Dorsey also. I don't know if uh, you can pass up on McFadden. If Al Davis is running this drive, what does he love? Size and speed. McFadden gives you that. All right. With the fourth pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Oakland Raiders select Darren McFadden, running back, Arkansas. <laughs> you knew the reaction would be loud, and it is. As uh, the player that most people say is the most talented with the biggest upside in the draft is selected by the Raiders. It's a great fit. 40-yard dash, 4-3-3, forget the numbers. This is a guy with home run capability. That's the key. Marshall touched on it. In addition, he's extremely tough. I love his upper body strength. My only issue with the kid on the field has always been he's got a narrow frame with his lower body. I think he goes down too often with arm tackles, but he's a home run hitter. He is, and you know what? L. Davis is tired of getting beat by LaDainian Thomason. <laughs> I've watched LaDainian Thomason and Larry Johnson rip the Oakland Raiders to shreds. He's quick, and when you look at coach's tape, you can see why. He's at the quarterback position, foot in the ground, explodes, now he's gone. 
great speed. We all know that. Again, at the quarterback position, can you make somebody miss? This is what he loves to do. He bounces it to the outside. Now, you got to make another little shimmy. You beat another guy to the outside. Look at the cut here. This is my favorite cut. Outside, I think he's going up. Oh, he's going to make the inside, stick the foot to the ground, make a miss, back outside again. Tremendous speed. How tough is he? Well, watch him get in the hole, gets hit up high. Bang, legs go down. Okay, watch the linebacker from Alabama. Comes off the guard, one-on-one -on -one tackle in the hole up high. Straight down. That's what I mean by narrow frame and no power with the lower body. One more time. Marshall Falk runs through this 100 times in a row. He can't quite get through the arm tackle. Marshall, <laughs> I love everything about the kid as far as a home run hitter. Those last couple clips bother me. Do they bother you at all? They do bother me. And, and, and you know, it puts you in the mind of Reggie Bush. Does he run well inside? I think he's a better runner in interior, in the interior part of the line, than Reggie Bush. The other thing is, let, let's not overlook this here. The one thing that can't happen with this kid is what happened with Jamarcus Russell. He can't miss camp. It, it can't be a holdout. I hope the Raiders get him in because of his background and his history. He don't want to get off to a bad start. Let's get him in camp, and he's going to make this team better. Uh, are the Saints still trying to trade up to get the player they covet in Glenn Dorsey? Rich, Kansas City has a major decision to make here because they can go ahead and take Glenn Dorsey or they can take the New Orleans Saints offer of their first round choice this year, their second round choice this year, and their first round pick next year. So the Saints are offering two ones and a two to get up to number five to take Glenn Dorsey here. And obviously Kansas City must decide in the next few minutes about whether or not to take that offer, Rich. I, I feel like uh, I feel like a Howie Mandel, Mike Mayock, deal or no deal on that. Would you take the deal or no deal? Would you take that deal if you're there? First of all, it looks to me like that means the Shockey deal's dead if they're giving away the two to go get this kid, first of all. Second of all, if I'm getting the one next year, I'm taking the deal. I got a major rebuild, and I wouldn't have said that an hour ago. But if it's a one, a two this year, and a one next year, I'm taking it. With the fifth pick, in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Glenn Dorsey, defensive tackle, LSU. There he is giving himself a round of applause. And, uh, yeah, get up out of your chair and hug your family and go meet the commissioner, Glenn. You're a National Football League player and you're a Kansas City Chief. Look at the arm length at only six, one and a half, 35 and a quarter inch arms. That's really important for a defensive tackle. He's strong, 27 bench presses. He's explosive up the field. His burst and explosion separate him. He's never on the ground. The big question coming in, medical and durability issues. He's been cleared medically. He will make Kansas City better immediately. You know, we talked a lot about Chris Long's character being A1. Here's another guy that is a gem. He's a gentleman. He's a great player on and off the field. Character issues, this guy is an A+. plus. You know, Mike, I like him because what he's going to do is what Jared Allen couldn't do on the end. He put him in the middle of that defense, and now Donnie Edwards, and, and, you think Donnie Edwards and Derek Johnson become better linebackers for you, and he's going to command the double team, and your defense get better than they do with an edge guy only. Got a uh, Vilma <laughs> jersey on. He's wearing some old school stuff now that Vilma's a saint. But uh, the fans are excited. Many of them wanted McFadden, but I, I would bet dollars to donuts they'll be just happy with the last guy back there in the green room, Vernon Golston. What do you think, Mike? Rich, they're a 3-4 team, and they were one of the worst defensive teams in the league last year. Points scored against them. This is Vernon Golston, who played hands down as a defensive end, but also stood up. Look at the get off. He's so much quicker than everybody else with that first step. It gains him the edge. He had a huge game against Jake Long, the best game of his year. Outside speed rush. He knocks the hand of Jake Long down, accelerates the quarterback, gets the sack. Look at the bull rush right here. One arm on the tackle, the left arm for the sack. His physical abilities against the run. He splits the double team makes the play. There are times when this young man takes my breath away. I can't believe how good he is. There are other times when he stays blocked forever. I had one NFL head coach say to me, watch him on this play, you'll see the athletic ability. 
Again, the first step get off, how quick he is, the movement inside, the acceleration to the quarterback. I had an NFL head coach to say to me, the biggest problem I have with him is when he gets blocked, he stays blocked. Great ability. Remember, they gave up a third round and a fifth round pick to get Chris Jenkins to be the nose tackle. This is the guy they need, an outside rusher in the 3-4. Okay, Jeff Vance, with the sixth pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Vernon Golston, defensive end, Ohio State. And the masses rejoice. <laughs> wow. They like. Will they like more come September? I love what kind of athlete he is. All I ask from this young man is a little more consistency. He's really blessed. At 266 pounds, he ran a 4.67. Look at the strength. He bench pressed 225, 37 times. He's got a tremendous first step. He's a natural pass rusher. Again, from snap to snap and game to game, I want to see more consistency, and I hope that's something he grows into. You know, the kids from Detroit, Rich, I don't know how the University of Michigan yeah. or Michigan State let this guy go to Ohio State, but it happens. But this guy's going to the right place at the right time because they can use his skills right now. And this guy's a good kid. Yeah, you're right. He's got to be an every down player, stay on the field, hustle every snap, and he's got a chance to be a pro bowler. You know, his on the field things doesn't bother me. It's dealing with the media here. If you're not as successful as what a sixth pick in the NFL draft is supposed to do, if he doesn't produce and the media gets on him, does he shell up? New England Patriots are on the clock, less than three minutes to hey. go for a team that uh, won 18 consecutive games last year, <laughs> lost only once, joined the Miami Dolphins as the only other team in the modern era to complete a regular season undefeated, and yet they are at the top of this draft because of a draft day trade they pulled off last year with the San Francisco 49ers who wanted to tackle Joe Staley and traded uh, this year's first round pick with New England, and they went ahead and traded this pick again. It's just been announced that the New Orleans Saints are on the clock right now for two minutes and change, and the Patriots just do this every year, Mike. <laughs> they constantly go in and trade down and always seem to have multiple picks, which they would have had this year had they not been docked the first round pick because of the whole spying matter. Bill and Scott Pioli believe in more draft picks, and they also believe in targeting the guy they want. I firmly believe that they know they can get at 10 the same guy they could have gotten at seven. They will get additional picks and pay that guy less money. So the whole thing is a win-win for the New England Patriots. And I would also tell you, I think we're going to hear a second trade on the next pick. I think Baltimore is going to move back somewhere into the 20s so they can go get Flacco or Henny, and you're going to see somebody move up, perhaps for a defensive end. Well, the Ravens are now on the clock because the Saints didn't waste any time. Who do you think it's going to be? You know, I, I, I have no idea. When you think about the Saints, you got to think linebacker. They did get Jonathan Vilmer, maybe a Keith Rivers, a guy you put outside. The linebacker position for them was probably it's, the weakest part of their defense. Cedric Ellis, I, I pretty there much you go. guarantee There you go. They They've go. been working the phones the last couple days to go After get him. After losing Dorsey, that makes sense. They yep, wanted Dorsey, exactly. the next yep. best guy, Ellis. Yep. You had them neck and neck for a while. Yep. Yep. The New England Patriots traded the seventh pick to the New Orleans Saints. With the seventh pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the New Orleans Saints select Cedric Ellis, defensive tackle, USC. So you got that run there, right, uh, Mike, because they didn't get Glenn Dorsey, the player they coveted. And this guy, should we even call him the next best thing, or, or they're 1A and 1B? This is a really good football player who had his pro day ran even better than that 5-3-2 that you saw from the combine. He's a one-gap penetrator with great quickness and burst. He gets washed a little bit too easily sometimes when he doesn't play with consistent leverage, but he had a great season, and when you go to the coach's tape, I think we'll see that he can play the three technique in a four-man front or the tilt nose in at 3-4. Here he is tilted, 
great job with quickness, explosion, in the nine on seven drills at the Senior Bowl. Look how quick that is, the step, and I love his hands also. Look how quick his hands are. Relentless hands. He's got great technique. Look at him get off, now he gets pushed a little bit past the hole, and that's what I mean. Occasionally he gets too high. When he exposes his chest, he can get blocked. And that's what happened on the last two plays. He gets too high, the hand placement on the chest, that's when he gets blocked. I have to interrupt you, Mike, because you are spot on as well. The Ravens just traded out of the spot. <laughs> the Jacksonville Jaguars Derek are on Harvey the clock. Will tip, they will pick Derek Harvey. That's because they need a defensive end badly. Golston and Long off the clock, so Jacksonville will come up and take Harvey. They'll gladly move down the 26 for Flacco or Henny. I like, I like it. it. Let's look at that Jaguars team. Great year last year, right? Who would they have to chase in their division? The Indianapolis Colts. There you go. What do you got to do to beat the Colts? Get Manning. You got to get to Peyton Manning. They tried to get a couple defensive ends in a trade. It didn't work out as far as a veteran defensive end. They're going to go get Derek Carr. The other thing is, when you look at the two teams moving back, the one thing that they have is they have a solid core Four. of players. They're not going to spend money on some young guy to come in and try to help them. They can win right now. Baltimore, that was a bad year last year. They had some injuries to McNair and stuff like that. But when you look at what they have, they have a core. They don't need to bring young players out. So what do they do? You move back to not bring up, break up the nucleus of your team. Adam Schefter, your thoughts on all this? Well, it looks like a great trade for the New England Patriots, Rich, because essentially the Patriots go back three slots in the first round. They also give up their fifth round pick. They get the 10th overall pick, and they get an extra third round pick from the New Orleans Saints. So the Patriots are manipulating this draft as they always do. The player that they want will be there at 10. There are two players. Each of them will be there at 10. They lose nothing by going back three spots, pick up an extra third round pick. The New England Patriots doing what they do, Rich. But again, this started all last year when the, New, uh, the San Francisco 49ers wanted Joe Staley, traded that first round pick to them this year, and also the 110th overall pick last year, which the Patriots then used to get, oh, by the way, Randy Moss. Yep. And it just keeps cascading one pick after another, a year into y after year. That's the art part of it. And you're watching New England work it best. They have a system, but to manipulate the draft board like they're doing, to get picks and, and, and still get your guy. If they can still get their guy, that's the art form of it. Well, Rich, the interesting part of this trade also, of course, is that New Orleans knew that it had to go up from number 10 to get Cedric Ellis because the Cincinnati Bengals absolutely were planning to take Cedric Ellis. He was their guy. The Saints knew that at number 10, they would not be able to get Ellis there. They had to vault in front of the Bengals. So a rough day for the Cincinnati Bengals. They have some work to do to make up. Baltimore has traded their selection to the Jacksonville Jaguars. With the eighth pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Derek Harvey, defensive end, Florida. And there is a run on defensive ends. That's three now. Uh, and the top eight picks, Mike. And there's a premium on guys that can get to the quarterback, and we're seeing that today. Derek Harvey, a junior that came out early, was a dominant sophomore, long arms. Excellent, natural pass rusher. He can set the edge as far as a run defender. The question some teams had was could he stand up, but in Jacksonville with a base 4-3, he doesn't have to worry about that. I really believe his best football is ahead of him. He's got a good first step. He's not quite the quick twitch guy Long and Golston are, but a very good first step. Six, four and a half, 271 pounds. He dips and he can get around the corner while he bends against Jake Long. Check the bull rush out, sets him up. He gets underneath Big Jake, dumps him on his butt. Against the right tackle this time. Look at the extension on the bull. Comes through, strips the football. That's a great football play. Now they're in the three-man front, little spin front, excuse me, a spin move, splits the two defenders. He's got an awful lot of natural pass rush ability. My only concern here, he's got to kind of grow into that body. That is a tight end that dumped him on his butt. I also love the fact that he's a hustle guy. Look, he gets blocked, he gets pushed by the quarterback. Guess who makes the hit, though? Five yards down the field. It's Derek Harvey. So, not only does he have natural pass rush ability, he hustles every snap. I think his best football is ahead of him. He's only a junior, and it tells you something. 
Jacksonville thinks they're ready to compete with Indianapolis and win a Super Bowl. They think this guy is one of the key pieces. Welcome back to the NFL Draft presented by Sprint. We uh, alluded to the fact that the Jaguars could have paid a steep price to move up from uh, 26 to 8 for Derek Harvey and two third round picks and a fourth round pick. That's a, that's a pretty heavy price, is it not, Marshall? You know what, it is, but you understand, Jacksonville had a need. They lost Bobby McCray to the Saints. They had to fill a void. If you're going to compete with Indianapolis Colts, then you got to rush the passer. That's putting pressure on Peyton Manning. The next best guy was Derek Harvey, and they got their guy. Who do you think the Bengals are going to take in this draft? You know, I thought they wanted Derek Harvey. Now I'm thinking linebacker. And the two linebackers there would either be Keith Rivers or Gerard Mayo. They've got a lot of needs, though. They could take a tailback here. I think they're going to wait the tailback for the second or third round and find a guy that can make people miss in the open field. I look at the whole thing, and I think linebacker in this spot gives you value, and, it's, and, it, and it fills a need. With the ninth pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select... Keith Rivers, linebacker, USC. And that is the 69th first round pick selected of all time out of USC. That is an all time best. Here is the uh, young guy who always wore that vaunted number 55. They don't give out that number willy nilly in uh, Southern <laughs> California. He's highly athletic, the best and the most fluid linebacker in this draft. He moves like a safety. I would have liked to have seen him make more plays. He had three career sacks and he played with a bunch of real good football players, but his upside because of his athletic ability is absolutely fantastic. I thought he played more physical at the Senior Bowl than I saw him play all year. Takes on the offense, the tight end, makes the play in the nine on seven drill. Again, look at him come downhill. Correct leverage. He hits him with his inside arm and shoulder, makes the play on the running back. Downhill and physical. Take away the inside, attack the inside shoulder. Now jump on that hip. You can see how fluid a defender he is. Again, inside hip. He doesn't eat up enough of that, but look at him flip his hips and run. That's a guy that at 240 pounds runs a 4 5 8, 40. Attack the inside, whoop. He gets beat because of poor technique, but trust me, at the next level, he will learn how to take advantage of his athleticism way too much for Justin Forsett. He can get to the quarterback, but I love how he comes downhill. Watch him knock the helmet right off of Owen Schmidt because he came downhill and he attacked the fullback. He's the second guy from the USC Trojans to get drafted. They're probably gonna have about a dozen guys today from Pete Carroll's team, but this guy's well coached. Ken Norton Jr. is his coach over there at USC at coaching those linebackers. This kid is a good one. Rich, it's going to be really interesting to test the Patriots' need versus value system that they seem to put in place. They still need a cornerback after the loss of Asante Samuel, and of course, the top cornerbacks are still on the board, but will they pay that kind of money for them? They say that they want to get the most valuable player for that team over the long term. Even though they already have three Pro Bowl offensive linemen, could that mean that they would go for somebody like Brandon Albert with Al Gro as his head coach? They like that coaching pipeline to get inside information on these guys. He's versatile, and that might be the way they go. Or maybe they trade down again. They love to make those draft day moves. And even though they talked about it's tougher to make those moves uh, in the first round of the draft these days, they seem to be doing a pretty good job of it. Rich? Uh, you are shaking your head over Brandon yeah. Albert, uh, Mike. What yeah, do you think? I, they're not going to take an offensive lineman. Rich, they had three players total over 2,000 snaps last year on their defense that were over 35 years old. Okay, think about that. Three players over 2,000. They got to get younger and faster on defense. It's either going to be a corner like Dominique Rogers, Cromarty, or it's going to be a linebacker. And one linebacker is off the board, Keith Rivers. The other one's Gerard Mayo, who's one of my favorite players in the entire draft. Let's hear what uh, the guys on uh, the set down uh, near the stage think about that. Jamie Dukes, Charles Davis, and Brian Billick, gentlemen. Well, I got to tell you what, guys, as I, as I hear what they're talking about, I think what Mike Mayock says makes perfect sense. But my last impression of the New England Patriots was Tom Brady getting hit a lot. Mm -hmm. And I understand they have to get younger on defense. But my last, the last thing I saw was him getting hit a lot in that game. And to me, and it's just me, Brandon Albert is a better player than the corners they can get. I like Dominic rogers Camardi. I like Leotis McKelvin. But Brandon Albert, to me, is special. You got an opportunity to get him now. 
I would take him with this pick myself. With the 10th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Gerard Mayo, linebacker, Tennessee. There you go. There's the undervalued linebacker from Tennessee going 10th overall. This is an inside-outside linebacker. Ran 4-5 at the combine. Ran in the 4-4s at 242 pounds. Highly productive. He can play inside or outside. All he needs to do is stay healthy. And the other thing I know about this young man is he loves the game of football. And if you're going to play for Bill Belichick, you better. He's also intelligent. He's a team leader. And he's the kind of guy you want as a teammate. Versus the run. Watch him come downhill, take on the offensive lineman, get good leverage, and make the play. How is he in space? Option. There goes the flip. Breaks down, looks outside to see if he's going to get cracked on. No crack back. He accelerates to the football with that great speed. This is a hustle play right here. Quarterback rolls away from him, continues, 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 makes the play. Hey, guys, does he look like a Patriot so far? <laughs> look at him now. In coverage. Smells screen. Darren McFadden. Not so fast. Again, is he a hitter? Follows the quarterback's eyes, which take him to the football. Look at the hit. Separates Jacob Tammy. Forces the interception. And then again, how athletic. Gets underneath. Flips his hips. Catches the football. Takes it to the house. That is a New England Patriot. And Charles Davis, as a University of Tennessee alum, what do you think <laughs> about that pick, brother? Well, I'm awfully happy for the University of Tennessee Flash, Gerard Mayo. I wish that he had gone back to school for another year as an alum, but I understand why he came out. And I think he's a terrific player. I still, for the life of me, this is just me, and I know I'm totally in the minority. Tom Brady's my money man. Tom Brady makes magic for me. And I understand getting younger on the other side and all that. And Jamie has, has pointed out to me that maybe it's an aberration in the Super Bowl. But you guys know, I've been talking about Brandon Albert since we saw him at the Combine. So uh, the, num the number six overall pick. Rich, here comes the run on corners. We haven't seen a corner yet. Buffalo will either trade down or take Leotis McKelvin or Dominique rogers Cromarty, and then expect to see some corners some offensive tackles and some running backs between 11 and 19. Well, it's been a run on defense. Six straight picks have come on the defensive side of the ball, Adam Schefter. I had to say that. Nick love it. I had <laughs> to Nick say Elvin. that. I love it. <laughs> With the 11th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select Leotis McKelvin, quarterback, Troy. And there's your first cornerback of the day, Mike. He was my highest rated corner. Great great change of direction. Wonderful feet. He will hit you. The only reservation I have about him, great feet and change of direction. Added value in the punt return game. He's got poor ball skills. I saw him against Oklahoma State literally get hit in the helmet three times. He made great moves on the football, but couldn't finish the interception. Outside of that, he's a pro ball corner. With the 12th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Denver Broncos select Ryan Clady. <laughs> Tackle, Boise State. Oh, a little bit of blue turf's gonna go to the Rocky Mountains, huh? First ever junior to declare and first ever first round pick from Boise State. Six, six and an eighth. Wonderful athletic, great feet, a lot of upside. He's a pure left tackle. He's got to work the hand placement, and he's got to work on finishing run blocks. He's still a work in progress, but five years from now, some people think he can be the best left tackle coming out of this draft. Now, when I watched tape early in the year, he got beat a lot. And here it is. Look at him bend at the waist. It's because he's a grabber instead of a puncher. Again, he reaches and grabs, and the minute you reach, you bend at the waist and you get beat. But that's a technique issue. It's not a talent issue. Look at him flip his hips on the reach block, get in front of the defensive end and wall him off. you got to be a great athlete to do that. Against Hawaii, he's going to sit in perfect pass pro. You can see how flexible he is. He can bend and anchor. Second level, get out on the linebacker. Now look at the footwork as you bury him. Now here's my problem a little bit. Look at the offensive lineman. They're going to slide. He missed the Rex on the slide. The edge rusher comes free. Again against Hawaii. Look at the three interior linemen. 
We're going to slide that way. He has no idea which way. Here comes the edge rusher. Beats him again. So I'm not saying that that's a horrible thing, but when I watch enough tape of guys, I get a little nervous. This, is he a rep guy? Is he going to take a lot of reps to learn my defense? But at the end of the day, his physical ability reminds me of the Brickishaw Ferguson and Tony Hugo. He's that kind of player. I spoke to his coach in college. Now, Sean Kugler with the Buffalo Bills. He told me this guy has got it. Keep in mind, he came to Boise State as a defensive lineman. He played basketball in high school, so he's athletic and very skillful. So he's fairly new at this position, yep, Mike. Yep. He's going to grow into that big body, get stronger, and he's going to be a heck of a left tackle. The uh, Carolina Panthers uh, perhaps can take that Brandon Albert pick off the board. I see a running back or a tackle here. Okay, Jonathan Stewart, the running back from Oregon, could be the pick here. If they don't go with Jonathan Stewart, I think it will be Brandon Albert. But one of those two guys, they want to punch some people in the mouth and get a little more physically tough. Back to John Fox style football. With the 13th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Jonathan Stewart, running back, Oregon. Wow, Mike, you nailed this one. And he's he's obviously, uh, a lot of people think, perhaps one of the, obviously one of the top three running backs with that toe surgery coming off. Obviously, the Panthers have no issue with that. He's a height, weight, speed guy with excellent production and toughness. My only question was I don't see a second gear, but when you're 235 pounds and run 448, maybe you don't need that second gear. Watch him again in the spread offense that Oregon runs. Stacks his foot in the ground, get up the field, Drop your head, run through that tackle. He's a tough guy that has great balance and vision. He's going to bounce it outside. Now look at look at the athletic ability for a 235-pound guy. Keeps his feet, maximizes the run. I want to see a burst here to get past two defenders. Right here, Marshall, show me a second gear to get through that hole. Don't see it. Bounces it outside. Now, Marshall, I want to see you drop the pads and run through this safety. Got to take him on. Who won that battle? <laughs> the safety. Pass game. Good elevation. Dennis Dixon's going to drop it off. He's a three-down back. Catches the football. I really like the guy, but he doesn't have the same shimmy, the same wiggle that Mendenhall has, who, by the way, might go in a couple picks to Arizona at 16. I think we're going to see a little running back run. And, of course, uh, Mendenhall could go to the Bears as well, who are on the clock right now. Adam Schefter joins us. Adam? Rich, the Carolina Panthers had some infi inside information here because their doctor, Robert Anderson, was the doctor that performed Jonathan Stewart's turf toe surgery. They knew that he was very good and ready to go for training camp. When Anderson did that surgery, he gave the Panthers a clean bill of health. And the Panthers typically are one of the toughest teams in the league when it comes to physicals. But in talking to their doctor who did the surgery, they know Stewart was good to go. Well, I mean, as far as the Chicago Bears are concerned, you start to look at tackles and running backs. Brandon Albert's available. Mendenhall, who's my number one tailback. Rogers Cromarty, Philip Merling. You know, at this point with the Bears, I really believe they were looking for an offensive tackle in this position. And it's not Ota. I think it's going to be Brandon Albert, who's my highest ranked guy. <laughs> With the 14th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears select Chris Williams, offensive tackle, Vanderbilt. And there oh, my is. goodness. Does that surprise I, you? I had completely forgotten that I picked him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at my mark, Chris Williams. He's 6'6", 315. He's a finesse left tackle from Bandy. I think his senior bowl week really elevated him. He's got to be a little bit more consistently physical, especially at the point of attack in the run game. But he's a tackle, not a guard. And he's a prototype left tackle in the NFL. Gets a little bit high there, OK? He's not as good a run blocker as he is a pass blocker at the Senior Bowl. Senior Bowl practice, he's grabbing instead of punching. When you grab, right there, Marcus Harrison gets under him and jacks him back. What he does best is kick slide, and you can see right here, overextends and gets beat on the spin move. Overextends, nice spin move, gets beat. But what he does best, watch the left foot now, kick slide, closes the door, that's where he looks good. When he kick slides, 
gets his hands on you and locks you out. That is a prototype pass pro right there. Kick slide again, power step to stop the inside move. Chris Williams will immediately start at left tackle. That'll allow them to take John Tate and kick him in the right tackle where he's a better football player. Rich, it's a very interesting board right now because I don't think the Detroit Lions expected Richard Mendenhall to slide this far in the draft. They've talked about adding a running back in Detroit, getting that ground game going, and with Richard Mendenhall on the board and Jonathan Stewart off it, Richard Mendenhall could wind up being the pick here, Rich. And of course, as we know, uh, the Lions are well-versed and their fan base well-versed with Big Ten country. And uh, Matt Millen has just pulled off a trade, everybody. The Kansas City Chiefs, as we know, have a, an absolute glut of trades. Uh, got glut of picks in this year's draft uh, have traded up into this spot and have gone ahead and made their selection. So right now the Cardinals are on the clock right now. Who do you think the Chiefs are looking at? I think it's pretty obvious. Brandon Albert. They had a defensive end, offensive tackle need. They took Dorsey because he fell into their lap at five. They didn't want to wait to 17 and take the chance that Brandon Albert wouldn't be there. They made the move to get the offensive lineman that can play guard or tackle for them day one. Whether it's Kansas City or whoever, Brandon Albert is the guy to take, and I'll tell you why. His position flexibility to play guard yep. or tackle if you need to is so important in the league right now because many teams, when you play on game day, only suit up seven offensive linemen. The Detroit Lions have traded their choice with the 15th pick yes. in 2008 NFL Draft. The Kansas City Chiefs select Brandon Albert, guard, Virginia. There he is, no Brandon surprise, Albert. And I give Carl Peterson and Herm Edwards a lot of credit. This is shaping up like a heck of a draft. 35 and a half inch arms, scheme versatility to play guard or tackle. He's a specimen. He's going to move outside the left tackle eventually. He's the best in space offensive lineman I've seen in years, but he also has to get stronger. His best part, though, is his feet. And if you're going to be a tackle in the NFL, watch this guy in space, guys, on the goal line. Not only gets the block, but look at him finish in space. Again, this time at the second level, here comes the safety support. He finishes in space. Knock him on his butt. Screen play. 25 yards downfield. Will finish in space on a free safety. Knock him right on his tail. I've never seen a 315 pound guy consistently finish in space like this guy. Look at his feet. Reach block on the stretch play, gets across the nose, finishes in space. Only time I could see him miss this whole year. A little spin here. He thought the center was going to step outside. The center did not on a slide. But look again at the feet. Slides inside. Left arm on the shoulder pad. That is pass protection like it's supposed to be. Guard or tackle, Mooch down the road. Did you like what you saw oh, I love that guy. with the footwork? I, I love that guy because he's so, he, he's so versatile. In terms of that trade, they swap first round picks and then the, the Lions uh, get the third round pick. The number one player on Mike Mayock's board right now is Richard Mendenhall and the Cardinals are deciding between Mendenhall and Dominique rogers Cromartie. They were hoping to get a running back or a cornerback. This works out pretty well for them because they now can pick whichever the player that they want. Mike, which do you think is the choice? Adam, you hit it right on the head. Uh, the other people they might have had on their board are all off as far as Rivers and Albert. So for me, I think they're going to take, I think it's a gut check time for Arizona. They've got a running back. They could use another. And you know I like Mendenhall. But I think the pick needs to be Darren, or excuse me, Dominique Rogers pro Marty. I think the upside for him at this point in the draft is absolutely perfect. I didn't like him a little bit earlier on with all that money involved. Right now, I love the kid. I think he's a boom kind of guy that could be a pro bowl player. And let's face it, Arizona needs a corner badly. What they want to do with Ken Wisenhut is run the football. And whether Mendenhall can come in and correct their running game woes that they somewhat had and the inabilities to run the football, I don't know. But they wanted Albers bad. Where they go from here, it's up. It's up in the air. Well, the commissioner has been handed the card to belonging to the Arizona Cardinals. In fact, Cardinals have already made their choice. With the 16th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select 
Dominique Rogers Cromartie. Yeah! Cornerback, Tennessee State. Your guy in prime. Yeah! <laughs> What do you like about him so much? I like the intangibles. I like the upside. No, he's not as polished as he should be right now, but he has it. The only thing that I dislike about this guy, he runs. He can run like the wind, but I want to see him play utilizing all of his speed. When I watch film on him, I don't see the burst. I don't see the explosion that I know he's capable of having. So I want to work with this guy. And also, you can look at him right here in the bumper run. Not guessing, open up the gate too much, but he's going to sit on it, get up under, attack, come out of the hips and burst because we see him running the 40. We, we saw him working his drills, and he, this guy is pretty darn good. Vertical, playing the vertical there, Dion never got his head around. Good coverage, never got his head on the swivel. Press man, a little too concerned about the man, doesn't play the ball. I think he can make a pick here, Dion. Okay, where'd the ball go? Don't look at you, you're, you're running the dance with him. It's great coverage, find the football. Don't be afraid to get your head around and make the play. Finish it. Hard inside technique, off man. Opens up his hips a little bit too soon, but still, nice I drive. love the drive. Nice drive. He opened his hips early, but look at the drive and the footwork. I honestly believe that this young man's got the best upside of any corner in this draft. Well, Steve, your former Lions are on the clock, and we talked about the Patriots manipulating the draft before. I think the Detroit Lions have done the same because they went back two spots in the first round. They picked up extra spots in the third round. They got an extra fifth-round pick out of it, and they're going to be able to come away with it probably with the same guy, Rashard Mendenhall, Mike's top-rated player. He could be the pick here, and if he is, Detroit has manipulated the draft just like New England did. Well, the uh, Detroit Lions have already made that selection, putting the the uh, Houston Texans on the clock right now and uh, again they had Richard Mendenhall available at 15 as Adam pointed out they pick at 17 if, if it is in fact Richard Mendenhall the pick they would get your top running back on your draft board Mike Richard Mendenhall I think they've got some defensive issues they were 32 in about four or five different categories last year the problem is the two prime defensive players Derek Harvey and Gerard Mayo were gone which is why I think they've traded down. If they get Mendenhall, I think they get a great football player, but they've got significant defensive issues on that team. In an earlier trade from the Kansas City Chiefs, with the 17th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Gozder Sherilis. Goz. Tackle, Boston College. Well, they will go ahead and take Gozder Sherilis. Boy, is there a run on tackles. Had a feeling this could happen. Look at the arm length, 36 and a quarter, 6, 6 and a half. He played right tackle for four, three years. He's a natural right tackle, will struggle with speed. They kicked him to the left side his senior year, and he struggled with elite speed. Here he is in the senior bowl. Nice punch. You can see how strong the punch is. Bang, right to the helmet. But he's got some technique issues. Doesn't holster the arms at all. They're down. He's got to extend them up and punch. When that happens, he catches and he's done. You've got to get those hands up and get into the body. Again, look at the extent now. You're way overextended, too wide. Any good defender is going to make a move on you. The hands and the feet get overextended. What I do like is a power step, though. Watch on the inside move. The left foot comes down. He shuts down the lane for Lawrence Jackson with the power step from the left foot, closes the door on the inside move. I think he's a right tackle. Most of the league thinks he's a right tackle. The Detroit Lions went ahead and made the decision to improve their infrastructure instead of their skill level. It's time to check on the sprint draft room of the Houston Texans where a trade by Gary Kubiak and Rick Smith and the crew have just been pulled off the Baltimore Ravens who traded out of the eighth spot when they couldn't get Matt Ryan all the way down to 26 of the Jaguars have traded back up to 18 and are now on the clock right now. What do you, Mike Mayock, make of this? It's a no-brainer. They're working the board. Ozzy and Eric DaCosta are working their board. They moved out of number eight to 26. Now they're scared to death that Joe Flacco might not be there if they wait till 26. Somebody else might jumpstart them. So now they're using probably one of the third rounders they acquired in the initial trade to go from 26 back up to 18. And I can pretty much guarantee you it is the big one. Gulliver in the land of the Lilliputians in Division <laughs> 1AA. I see Joe Flacco.
going to have to play from the pocket because he doesn't have the mobility that some of these other quarterbacks do have. But he's, he's, uh, he's a guy that can throw it all around, and I think they're going to like him when they get him. Let's see if it is going to be Joe Flacco. Here's the commissioner with potentially news for Baltimore Ravens fans that they have a new quarterback of the future. In a trade from the Houston Texans, with the 18th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Joe Flacco, quarterback, Delaware. 6'6 and 3'8, 236 pounds. I got a lead from a scouting director back in October that told me to get my butt down and watch this kid practice at the University of Delaware. And what I saw was one of the biggest arms I've ever seen at the collegiate level. He can make every throw, but he's got a lot to go on his footwork. A, because he's a big guy, and B, because he's playing in that spread offense where he's never under center. So he's going to be a little bit of a project. But guys, take a look at this tape with me, okay? You want to talk about being able to make every throw. This is a deep bow out at 18 yards all the way across the field. Over the undercover in front of the safety. Look at the hip torque he gets on his interior throws. He's going to step into it. Bang! This ball comes out of his hands and gets on top of his receiver in a heartbeat. Pressure from his right. He feels it. He steps up. And again, the in-breaking route while he's on the move. Watch the dart. Now, against cover two, he's got to pull the trigger here. In the NFL, you got to feel this come open. There's under coverage. you got to throw it right now. It's open. Instead, he takes the sack. However, later in the same game, he already learned. Exact same situation. Safety split underneath coverage. Guys, watch the throw. He gets smacked in the face, and he put it right on him. Joe Flacco, to me, could be outside. To me, it's Matt Ryan is the best quarterback. But five years from now, a lot of people think, Coach, that he might end up being the best quarterback out of this draft class. Because this is a burning question everyone in Baltimore is going to want to know. How soon does this guy get under center? Because everybody's seen what Kyle Bowler can do, I guess. Now. And Troy Troy Smith, Heisman Trophy or not, I mean, this this is a guy who's a first-round pick, 18th overall. You say now? Now. He, he, they, they, they have no choice. You got to think the Baltimore Ravens, they're not, they know not that they're not going to the Super Bowl. Let's let's be for real. Coach Billy, he can tell you that. Sitting over there, he may not tell you that, but I say that. <laughs> they're not a Super Bowl caliber team at this time. I think the time is now to get this kid on the field and let bygones be bygones and let him learn this game. Well, but Dion, you got to remember, they ran me out of town because they did that with Kyle Bowler. <laughs> so uh, they got a little bit of a history there. You know, they have faith in Kyle Bowler and able to lead that team. If they decide that they want to play him right from the get-go, I'm a believer in that, obviously. But I think with Kyle there, if they choose to let this kid mature a little bit more, they'll have that option available to him. There's the owner, Jeffrey Lurie. Mike, what do you think is going to happen here? We haven't seen a wide receiver come off the board yet. Marshall Falk, you and I had this conversation prior to the first pick of the draft. Devin Thomas is the number one ranked wide receiver by most teams. Remember, I don't have a wide receiver with a first round grade, but at this point, I think he's gonna be awfully attractive to the Eagles and to Donovan McNabb because they just don't have any kind of vertical threat, a big guy that can run. When I look at it, you look at, I mean, they have to understand what T.O. does for Romo. The number one thing is what Randy Moss did for a guy like Tom Brady, what Marvin Harrison means to a Peyton Manning, you must provide this guy a target to throw the football to, a guy that's going to stretch the defense, and that defenses are going to respect so your two and three guys can do well. Well, the Eagles have made a trade. Oh. Yep. So the sprint draft room camera will let you in Rocky on. Rocky no more. Something going on, yeah, Rock. Basically what happened is Apollo Creed came up from Tampa Bay and made the trade. <laughs> Trading up just oh. one spot. Tampa Bay sitting at 20 is now on the clock right now. With a and Tampa Bay needs a wide receiver, and perhaps they thought that somebody behind was going to come up and get Devin Thomas. So you think the Buccaneers have, are going to go ahead? They, and go ahead. they might go ahead and do that. They could use a defensive end. I don't see that happening right here. This is a tough one. I, I thought defensive end or corner, it could be Michael Jenkins from South Florida, but I'm going to bet that it's Devin Thomas in a trade with the Philadelphia Eagles with the 19th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Jeff Ota, 
tackle, Pittsburgh. So what happens here is the, here comes the power run game. They took Jonathan Stewart at number 13. Now they get the road grading offensive tackle. Again, John Fox, massive body and long arms. He's an aggressive brawler. I didn't like the game he had against Rutgers, but that's kind of picking nits a little bit. The bottom line is he's a prototype right tackle. He played on the left side only two years at the major college level, a transfer from Valley Forge Military Academy. That was against Chris Long. Watch the drive again against Chris Long. He get, he's got 60 pounds, more than he does. Great job flipping his hips and keeping Long off the ball carrier. Now we'll see him kick slide in pass protection. He's a wide body whose feet are good but not great. Against Rutgers, he got a little lazy. Gets beat back to the inside because he gets overextended. And the same thing happens with Rutgers. Gets beat again to the inside. I thought he had a sloppy game but I like what it does with Carolina. Several members of the United States military have been brought out here, and the commissioner is taking time out. And here is what the Panthers gave up to get Jeffrey Ota quite a bit. We have our first piece of mortgaging. Next year's first round draft pick, along with this year's second rounder and fourth rounder, sent to the Eagles to move up to take Jeff Ota. Back in a moment. Running backs like Rashard Mendenhall and Felix Jones have been pushed back right within reach of the Dallas Cowboys. Mike Mayock, do you think Dallas is salivating right now at what it's seeing on the draft board? Yeah, I think Dallas has to be because I think they were hoping that Felix Jones might get there. Heck, they might have a choice between Rashard and Felix. And here comes the commissioner for the next pick, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think it's either Devin Thomas or the next corner, Michael Jenkins from South Florida. With the 20th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Aqib Tlaib, defensive back, oh. Kansas. Hey, hey go. now. Now, Aqib Tlaib's a talented kid that's had some off-the-field issues. He ran very well at the combine with a 4-4-4. He jumped well. He's a big corner with long arms. Nice size. Good skill set. Added value as a returner. The long speed was questioned and answered. The consistency of the play was not. This is the kind of guy, top of your screen, Rudd game, that does a pretty good job. People question whether or not he'll take on a lead block. I saw some inconsistency there, but he will do it. Here he is, off man coverage. He gets out of that pedal. They do that shuffle, shuffle, slide technique, but he's got wonderful ball skills. He sees the ball in the air. He goes after it. I like this coverage right here. He knows he's got deep help, so he undercuts the route and go gets the football. That's an innate understanding of coverages. Here he is on a play where I don't understand why he can't get a little bit. He just lets the guy go, no redirection. That's cover two. Because I know the sideline's right there, but you've got to press back underneath him. Here he is against Jordy Nelson. This is the one play that bothered NFL teams more than any other. Not only does he get beat off the line by Jordy Nelson, but a guy that runs 4-5 ran away from him. So whether it was lack of effort or lack of skill, either way, NFL teams didn't like that. And when you compound it with some off the field issues he had throughout his career, a guy with kind of top 10 talent drops down towards the bottom of the first round. You know, I like Aleve. I mean, he's one of my young protégés, and I can't wait to work with him in the month of May. But this guy, he has a lot of talent. Like, I, like you said, and I reiterated, inconsistency. I think he needed to work on his skills, it's just the technical side of it, opening his hips, turning and running. Like we say, he, he is physical. He can tackle. He has fascinating ball skills. He's a playmaker, good hands and eye coordination. I think the guy can make plays. He will make plays in the NFL. I don't know if he's a cover two to corner, though. I think he's more than just a cover oh, two I agree. corner. I agree with that. But I think he has a tremendous upside in the NFL. To those in the oh, Dallas yeah, draft room waiting to make their decision, Dallas. the so Washington Dallas, Redskins Dallas, have Washington. just made a trade at number 21, dealing their draft pick somewhere else. Don't have the details just yet. The trade is just in. So the flurry of trades in the first round continues. Washington will be the next team, along with Houston, to have traded its first round pick. We'll wait to see what the Redskins are doing. Obviously, the Dallas Cowboys will be up after. The Redskins have traded their pick, and Charles Davis, busy draft so far. 
The Washington Redskins selected their, traded their pick, the 21st pick in the 2008 NFL Draft. The Atlanta Falcons select Sam Baker, offensive tackle, USC. They get the big offensive tackle, Sam Baker from USC. He was a guy who was a three-time All-American, three times All-Pac-10, four-year starter at USC, had a dinged up senior year because of injury. But here's a guy now, as you see, versatility, deluxe, technically proficient, maximizes skill set. I actually asked a scout, is he the kind of guy who can project inside? And they said, no, he's a left tackle. What do you guys see in a Sam Baker? Well, Jamie, you mentioned it earlier as well. Uh, if you're going to take a quarterback, you got to protect your quarterback. What do you do to protect your quarterback? Uh, you, you have a running game. We've got that with Michael Turner with an offseason trade. Now they've got an offensive lineman to put into the mix. Obviously comes out of a, a highly uh, touted program, knows what it is to be a good run blocker. They're putting the pieces together to protect Matt Ryan with a strong running game with Michael Turner and bolstering the offensive line with Sam Baker. And as we talked about going into this draft, as you see in this draft so far, the run has started with offensive linemen. Six of the last ten players that have been selected have been offensive linemen and that's going to be the key and the thing that I was saying going into the draft is if you're a team that is in desperate need of an offensive lineman don't be cute and grab one of those corners or grab somebody else grab these linemen because they're going to get scoffed up because offensive tackle you know there's an old saying that the guy said uh, and I won't mention his name old buddy of mine he said you can take a bag of bolts and put them on the inside at guard center and guard Tackles are just hard to find in this league. Guys who can dance with these defensive ends who are running 4-5 and 4-4 off the corner nowadays, you got to have a Rolls Royce tackle. The Cowboys had no clue that Richard Mendenhall was going to be available at this point in the draft. He's rated very highly on their board. And also, don't be surprised if they go cornerback. I know they, they had Michael Jenkins ranked very highly. Mike Jenkins, the cornerback out of South Florida. So uh, those are two picks to keep an eye on primetime. Yeah, you know, two picks, but I, I really like Felix Jones because he's a running back and he can give you everything, a little change of pace. Marion Barber, at the conclusion of this upcoming season, he's a free agent, and you're not going to handicap Jerry Jones. You're not going to back him into a corner. He's going to plan ahead. Now, I think they should go at a receiver, but I think they could get a receiver um, that's formidable in the second round. They need another cornerback. They've already addressed that need getting Pac-Man Jones. You know what, I think with the 28 pick, they go cornerback. This pick will be a running back. I look at Felix Jones. It's not like Jerry's drafted a lot of Arkansas guys. We know he was in love with McFadden. Felix Jones in that 8.7 yards per carry. He's gonna like that. Barber is a guy that he's never carried the load by himself, nor did Felix Jones. You paired him together fine, but don't be surprised. Chris Johnson, this guy is a speed guy, a return guy, and the guy that if you give him the ball in open space, especially out on the wing, because you have the middle covered and you have you winded up the middle and T.O. On the, on the edges, now you got a guy that can take it the distance from out the backfield. You know, I got to say, because I, I never saw a prime run when he was at the combine, so I never saw a sub 4-3, a real sub 4-3 of my life till Chris Johnson ran it. I don't think he's the pick, but I think he's intriguing. <laughs> it's running back, it's corner, it's wide receiver, and it's safety. They have four needs. They have two picks to fulfill two of those four needs. So what are your highest-ranked guys there? I think it's got, at 22, I think it's got to be the running back. And then at 28, I think they might go get a wide receiver unless yeah. they like Devin Thomas enough to say one of those two running backs will still be there at 28. I, I, I really like Phoenix Jones. I think he's going to be the guy. Crowd soaks in the fact that the Cowboys have made their selection. Sam Baker acquired by the Atlanta Falcons, the son of the Arena League commissioner, by the way. Unfortunately for him, there is no Arena League team in Atlanta. With the 22nd pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Felix Jones, running back, Arkansas. Makes a lot of sense. He's the perfect complement. The barber, you take one Jones, replace him with another. And remember, he gives you that big play capability. You know how we talk about McFadden? This guy actually had more explosion plays from the line of scrimmage. He's tough for his size. I don't think he's a three down back, but in Dallas, they will not ask him to be one. So it's a great fit. Dallas, which is already a strong offensive team, is getting stronger. Against LSU, wind up, he's lined up outside. This is him, guys. Find a seam and go. Remember at Arkansas, he was more of a compliment to McFadden. Out of the eye, you got to make the safety miss in the hole. Safety runs the hole, misses the tackle. 
finishes the run. Again, eye position, watch him make the break, gets up in the hole, make the safety miss, find green grass, now accelerate past the corner. That's what you're getting, a big play football player. Eye formation again, I picked these plays on purpose. I want to see people to see him running the way he will in the NFL. The other thing though is watch him make the safety miss again. Instinct, finish the run. He catches the ball well, he's coming downhill. Watch his lower body strength for a 207 pound guy. Pretty darn strong. I like the fit in Dallas. Two back system, they got an awful lot of weapons and I'm gonna tell you right now, <laughs> if you're a defensive player in the NFL, you are not looking forward to the Dallas Cowboys. Not at no, all. not at all. And you know what, Felix Jones, what I love about the kid is the one thing is, you can't teach vision. His eyes, you look up Phil, he finds the holes, he's able to get in small spaces, make himself skinny, and then explode, make guys miss in small places. That's what you want in the back. He's going to be a great compliment to Barber because what I found out about Barber in the game against the Giants was that he can't go all the way. He can't play four quarters. He needs a compliment. He's always had it. He started that game, got 100 yards in the first half. Second half was nowhere to be found. What do we think here, guys? I, I, went, I went off my own board for this pick, and I usually don't do that. I picked James Hardy on, on my mock draft for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think they've been looking for Plaxico Burris since they let him go away in free agency. I don't have a first round grade on this wide receiver, but I think they feel like he's a compliment. That kind of receiver is what they need in that offense. Now, again, that's me going off my own board. They lost Fanica, people are talking about linemen, but there's already been a run on the linemen. So I wouldn't be overly surprised to see a wide out here. Marshall, I think you disagree. Oh, uh, no, 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 I agree with you. Oh. I agree with you. All right, we'll see what it is. With the 23rd pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Richard Mendenhall. There it goes. Oh. Oh. Out of Illinois, the hard-charging Mendenhall is now going to be next to Willie Parker, or in the same uh, depth chart as Willie Parker. And that makes some sense. I had heard that they really liked Jonathan Stewart, not expecting Mendenhall to fall. Prototype three down back. He's a big back that can wiggle. My question, and Marshall brought it up also, is he a one-year wonder? Where was the production as a freshman and a sophomore? Here's what I like about him. It's hard to tell in these spread offenses, but right there I see him stick his foot in the ground and get north and south. And there's explosion and there's power. Watch him on the pitch. He's gonna lower the shoulder and get physical on the corner. Finish your run. Catches the football, he had 34 catches as a senior. He's a three down back. He gets in the open field, makes somebody miss, drags the defender for four or five yards. And this was one of my most favorite plays of here. Just a little swing pass. I think you get to see burst right here. Then you see vision. Then you're gonna see balance. There's the burst, here comes the vision. Wow, make a miss. There's the balance, finish the run. He's got some wiggle, he's got some finish. I think they're going to like him as a compliment to Willie Parker. And if you're wondering, boy, that seems a long time since the Steelers last chose a running back in the first round, you'd be right. The last one was 1989 when Tim Worley was selected seventh overall. Titans are on the clock when we return. Richard Mendenhall being potentially a one-year wonder. Yeah, a lot of questions about that. People wondered why he didn't beat out Pierre Thomas at Illinois, who was an undrafted free agent with the New Orleans Saints. Remember this. Pierre Thomas had got Antonio Pittman, a fourth round pick from Ohio State, cut last year to beat him out on the roster and was New Orleans' best running back down the stretch when Deuce went down, even though Reggie Bush was there, gave them much more production. So maybe he was a little better at Illinois than maybe we give him credit for. Yeah, one year wonder, Charles. I, I hear you. Also, a, a, a couple of off the field issues, but, but, but the kid's a player, bottom line. But what I do. Hello. Well, I here are the Tennessee you, Titans. Right with me, baby. There have been no wide receivers <laughs> taken so far. You'd like to think, or I, you one would believe, here comes the first one. I gave the 24th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft. Tennessee Titans select Chris Johnson, running back, East Carolina. There you go, Marshall Falk. You thought the Cowboys were going to take the speed, sir, but the Tennessee Titans do that. Wow. Now, 
And there's a run on running backs. That's three in a row. They that took great speed, home run hitter, added value. And he's one of the best return guys I've seen in the last few years in the kick game. He bounces everything outside. He doesn't like it. Let's take a look at that. I like you guys watching these tapes now. Watch him plant the right foot and get up the field. Right here. Watch his foot plant and get up the field now. That's quick. Either wake up in the morning with that or you don't. Breaks tackles. You know, he's got a lot of shimmy. Look at him. Boom. Get outside. His first instinct is always get outside. He does not want to be between the tackles. Watch the big hole open up inside. Where's he going, fellas? Uh-uh. I don't like that one. I'm bouncing it. Swing pass. But this is what he brings. It's all over. Once he has the angle, nobody's closing it. 4-2-4-40 mm. wow. at the combine. <laughs> and the kick return, you're talking about exceptional value. Now, I had the guy going in the second round because I thought I respected speed. However, apparently, Marshall, I didn't respect it as much <laughs> as Jeff Fisher, man. Wow. There's not a lot of guys that can outrun angles. And this guy, I mean, he just takes angles away. Yeah, he makes yeah. it tough on defenses. And just think about Vince Young. He's a guy who struggles to throw the ball down the field. So what do you do now? You throw the little bubble screen. We saw it with, we saw it with New England. You put the ball in Welker's hand on the bubble screen, and what do you do? Instant first down. What does that do for you? That brings the linebackers up. That makes people have to play cover two. Now you're predicting to the defenses what they must play, and Vince gets looks to see that he's accustomed to seeing. You can't play a bunch of different looks. And how about this? Let's go to the spread. Let's put the ball in his belly. Vince go one way, he goes the other way. Who do you go with? Home run hitter. Home run hitter. That, hey, that. Steve, can, it, can a team overvalue a guy? Was this too high in your estimation? You know, these are all playoff teams. This part of the draft now, there are all playoff teams. So oftentimes, they are drafting for need, and oftentimes they're drafting for depth. This guy is going to be a one-two punch in the backfield, a change of pace runner to Lendell White, and he's going to give them he's going to give them a certain role. It won't be the same as their starter. He won't need to be the starter. So they're adding to their team and their depth with picks like this. Welcome back to the 2008 Sprint NFL Draft. The Seattle Seahawks are on the clock. A number of players are still on the board. Lawrence Jackson, the defensive end from USC. We still have Chad Henney and Brian Brom, the quarterbacks out there. And something tells me we're not done seeing offensive linemen drafted in the first round. We've already seen seven. I think we'll see eight. Mike Mayock, right now, who to you is still the best player on the board? Well, I, I think the best player for Seattle, okay? They've got an offense without explosion on the edge. They got to help Matt Hassel back a little bit. They need a tight end to get up the field vertically. I like Dustin Keller from Purdue. He's not an inline guy, but you get him on the move and get him up the field, I think he can be special. The other guy that's kind of interesting here is Kent Wom Bomber, the defensive tackle from University of North Carolina. They lost two defensive tackles to free agency. And Seattle has traded the pick to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, <laughs> so the Cowboys. No, the corner. The board. Receiver. Corner. Wh receiver. Wh corner. You, Mayock, what is it? <laughs> <laughs> settle this. Settle Want this. Me to settle this one? Settle this. The funny part is he's saying offense and I'm saying defense. I'm saying Devin Thomas, wide receiver from Michigan State. So you agree with me? I didn't even know who said what. I said a receiver. <laughs> I think they need help at receiver. Not a starter, but a third receiver. Well, whatever the Cowboys did, they didn't stutter. Their pick is already in. They hadn't picked an offensive player the first round the first time in 10 years. They chose Felix Jones moment to go. Maybe here comes another one. In a trade from the Seattle Seahawks with the 25th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Mike Jenkins, <laughs> defensive back, South Florida. Got it, Marshall. It, it is the quarterback. More. He was the next logical corner on the list. Mike don't, Jenkins Don't nobody South say Florida. nothing about Mike Jenkins. I won't Jenkins. doubt you no more, Marshall. Runs a 4-3-8-40, real good height, weight, speed differential. Exceptional skill set for a corner for that size. Again, on tape, the inconsistent effort is why he's down there at 25 or 6 when he's got the ability to be a top 10 or 12 type of player. You put the tape on with Michael Jenkins, and what do you see? In and out, man, on number one. Plays with outside leverage. Now make a break on the football. Knocks the ball down. Covers the route perfectly with outside leverage. Now he's inside leverage. Loose man to Nam, number one. Eyes are in the back. Look at him. I like that. The eyes are in the backfield. 
He comes up, reacts, and makes the physical tackle. Crack in space. When he sees that crack, he's got to replace and get up, and now will you make the tackle in space? Gets involved with the play. And again, outside leverage defender. Back pedal smooth. He's not panicked now. He's got to close the distance and play the football. That's a good job by a corner. So again, what I see with him, with I watch four or five tapes on him. A couple tapes, he looks like a top 10 pick. A couple tapes, I wouldn't take him in the third round. One corner is going to go down somewhere throughout the year. Now you're playing with your fourth corner in the nickel package. And if one more corner go down, now you're down to your fifth corner in the nickel package. It is not hard for offensive coordinator like Steve Mariucci, our offensive head coach, to say, <laughs> you know what, I smell blood out there. That's the fifth corner. We're going to go right at that guy. So I do like to pick. To uh, get their second first round selection. Adam Schefter, what else do you have for us? Rich, a few things to clean up. First of all, Terrence Newman does have one year left in his contract, so he will be a free agent after next year. Number two, the Seahawks move back three spots, and Mike Mack was right on. Dustin Keller would be a better value at 28, and Seattle picks up a fifth and a seventh round pick. But every year we have a sleeper in the first round, a pick that nobody's expecting, and that pick is probably going to come right here. The eighth offensive lineman of the day to be taken in the first round could come right here. Dwayne Brown for Virginia Tech. The Houston Texans were hoping to come up with an offensive tackle. He's the tackle that Alex Gibbs, the offensive line coach in Houston, has identified as somebody that can come in and upgrade the Houston Texans offensive line. Houston was nervous about this pick, but it looks like they sweated it out and they will get their man and he will be the sleeper in the first round. You know, it's interesting, Adam, because their needs were corner, left tackle, and running back. We've had runs on corners, left tackles, and running backs. So at this point, Dwayne Brown, to me, I gave him a late two, early third round grade. Now we're talking about him in the first round. I don't even think he's a tackle. I think he's a guard at the next level. He's 6'4". He's a former tight end, which tells you he should be an athlete. But again, I think he's a little bit of a reach. But unfortunately for Houston, their needs are not matching up with what's left in the first round of this draft. In the trade with the Baltimore Ravens, with the 26th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Dwayne Brown, yep. tackle, Virginia Tech. And here he is, former tight end, okay, which tells you he was an athlete. 6'4", 315, long arms. Needs to get a little stronger. Played both right and left tackle at Virginia Tech. Kick slide. When he gets his hands on you and plays with leverage, he's a good football player. There it is, the kick slide. Nice job on the Miami defensive end. Not bad catch either, Justin Harper. Again, finishes the block. He's a guy with a lot of ability, and as a former tight end, you can see he moves well for a big fella. At the combine, look at those feet. Pretty good feet. Those are nice feet. Real nice feet for a 310 pounder. So people believe because he's even though 6'4 is not an ideal height, he has long arms and good feet. He's a little bit of a brawler, which I like also. So maybe there's that versatility of position where he can be a three or four position offensive lineman. But ultimately, they want him to be a left tackle when it comes right down. Well, their first acquisition was Alex Gibbs. Get the coach yep. in there that's going to run like Denver used to run and like Atlanta ran and led the league in rushing. So he, he probably handpicked this guy to improve that offensive line so they can establish a run game there in Houston because they're making great progress there under Gary Kubiak. Well, here we have another trade. Obviously, we've seen a lot of draft picks being traded, but the Philadelphia Eagles, who have been in action on the first day trading away their first round pick, have now traded a fourth round pick to the Miami Dolphins for Lorenzo Booker, the running back who last year was a second round pick. So the Eagles making a move on the offensive side of the football with all the draft picks that they picked up, Rich. So, uh, Adam, what are you saying right now? Well, Rich, San Diego lost Drayton Florence in free agency. They've been waiting to take Antoine Kaysen from Arizona. He's going to be the pick here. He's going to be a San Diego Charger. The Chargers have done well drafting cornerbacks in the first round. Quentin Jammer, Antonio Cromartie, and now again today, they're hoping they have the same luck with Antoine Kaysen from Arizona. What, what do you say about that, Mike? As a Brandon Flowers, I know you've had for highly rated. They would bypass him for him. They're two of my favorite corners, and, and I thought Kaysen was undervalued because he doesn't run as fast as some of the other corners. And in Arizona, they play predominantly a zone scheme, so he doesn't get a chance to play as much man as a lot of the other corners. They need to nickel back immediately. He's tough. I like him a lot, and 
don't forget, San Diego doesn't have a two or three or a four today because of last year. That's right. Next pick for the San Diego Chargers is 160th overall. So after this, smoke them if you got them down there. <laughs> With the 27th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the San Diego Chargers select Antoine Quezon, defensive back, Arizona. Well, he's a, he's a, you know, when coaches say he's a football player, that's the ultimate compliment from coaches, and that's what this guy is. He doesn't have the same speed as some of the 4-3 guys. He didn't get to play a lot of man, but he's highly productive. A four-year starter on a predominant zone team. Most of the league thinks he's a cover two-corner, but he's got good enough feet to play the nickel on third down. So he can step in day one in training camp and add value to the San Diego Chargers because of the loss of Drayton Florence. Here he is, bottom of the screen. Secure the vertical, which he does, no problem. He can run with a fast wide receiver. Line to the tight end side. I love his vision. In zone, his, he's underneath the deep route, makes the interception. This is a guy with great ball skills. He's a punt returner also. He understands how to read a quarterback. He understands route progression also from the corner. Comes a screen, beats the block, gets up, gets involved in the tackle. This is a cover two guy with, I think, more ability than to be just called a cover two guy. And let's face it, at San Diego, there's an awful lot of talent. So if you can find a guy that can help you in any way immediately, that's a good draft pick. We know, said that he is uh, leaving the scene in Seattle. And unless, of course, he takes another head coaching job somewhere else down the road, this is going to be the last time he is part of this process. And the Seattle Seahawks have made their choice. They traded spots with the Dallas Cowboys moments ago in exchange for a fifth and seventh rounder. Adam Schefter, what do you have? Rich, we are starting to get into the quarterback territory. The Packers could take a quarterback. The Miami Dolphins could take a quarterback. Brian Brom, Chad Henney still sitting on the board. A lot of teams interested here. So we are starting to get in the range of the quarterbacks. And there's no question, Adam. And you and I spoke yesterday about the possibility of some of those second round teams moving back into the first round and the logical trade down possibilities at this time you know we can talk about San Francisco at 29 and Green Bay at 30 both would trade back I think Seattle at this point however we talked about it a minute ago I like a tight end or I like a defensive tackle at this spot either Dustin Keller John Carlson the two logical tight ends or Kent Wam Bomber from North Carolina yeah I think their team is built with some pro bowlers on defense and I'd like to see them pick some targets, some weapons for Matt Hasselback, whether it's a receiver, I agree. tight end. <laughs> in a trade from the Dallas Cowboys, with the 28th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Lawrence Jackson, defensive wow. end, USC. So they now, go defensive end, and another USC Trojan goes off the board here. It was already the first time since 1983 that USC had three first-rounders. Now they've got four. Bring scheme versatility. He, can, he was a five-technique, meaning played the 3-4 defensive end. Four-year starter with over 30 sacks. I don't think he's a quick twitch up the field defensive end, but what I do think is that he's got long arms and he's athletic. He just doesn't have as quick a get-off as some people. But look at the arm length and the ability. Here he is against Sherlis, another first-round pick. Bull rush, but Charles gets underneath and re-anchors. Get him out real wide here. Nine on seven drill. Point of attack, USC against USC. Does a nice job forcing the bounce by another USC player, Chauncey Washington. In tight, against the tackle, gets up the field. Plays on the other side of the line of scrimmage, forces the ball back inside. Fundamentally sound when the ball goes away. Look, he keeps the shoulders parallel, knows there's cutback possibilities, and fills late. So he's a safe pick. I had him going early in the second round. What really stands out to me is that Philip Merling is sliding quickly, and I believe it's because of the surgery. He had a poor workout the other day, two days ago. Apparently, he wasn't ready to work out, and he tried to. He might fall out of the first round. I thought he was a top 15 pick when healthy. Meanwhile, as you saw, four USC Trojans, they're fighting on right here in the first round of this draft. Meanwhile, 
No wide receivers taken. For the first time since the common draft was instituted in 1967, this is the longest a draft has ever gone without a wide receiver selected. The 49ers have just made their selection. Are they going to take one? No. Like, Bomber or Lofton? Kent Wong Bomber, the defensive tackle, right. can play the nose in that 3-4. Or inside linebacker Curtis Lofton. I'll probably look like a fool because they'll go with the <laughs> wide receiver and we'll all get the Mayock chuckle up here. What do you think, fellas? If they do I got to wake you guys up, man. Yeah, we've been, we was going a while ago. <laughs> but what, what do we make of this? If, if, if they go with the if, wide receiver, it has to be Deshaun Jackson. It has to be. Jerry Rice gives, gives them input, right. lets them know that if he's the guy. And right. Marshall, I'm gonna, but Rich, all year long, I've told you I don't have a first-round receiver in this whole draft. And neither does the NFL so far. <laughs> Here's the 49ers. With the 29th pick in the 2008 NFL draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Kentuan Balmer, defensive tackle, North Carolina. He makes a lot of sense. He's, he's the prototype 3-4 nose tackle. They're building that defense. They've got edge people. He's a big, strong guy that benefited from new coaching this year. A little bit of a one-year wonder. Breakout senior year, Butch Davis and John Blake got into him, made him a better football player. Only one year of productivity, but there's a lot of upside for this football player. Coaches, tape, you gotta love tape. Big bull rush versus the guard at Miami. Gets under him. This is what inside guys are expected to do. Push the pocket. When you're a 3-4 nose or a 5 technique in a 3-4, which he can also play. So he'll give these guys in San Francisco the ability to play the nose or the defensive end in a 3-4 because he can play the 5 technique. I like his lateral movement skills here. He smells the quarterback to the outside. He fights outside, keeping leverage. Against a double team, you got to stay low. Like how he goes low. Stays stout, allows his linebacker to make an easy play. But like a lot of tall defensive linemen, when he gets high and loses leverage, he gets washed easily. And once again, Mike Mayock, the uh, 49ers prove that they're not in Mobile, Alabama for a vacation. They're coaching the Senior <laughs> Bowl. Point, they Eisen. pick another player from the Senior Bowl in an NFL draft. Indeed, the pack. And Vernon Golston is about to get himself a draft teammate because the Jets have gotten back on the clock striking a deal with the Green Bay Packers by trading their second round pick and a fourth round pick to move up the six spots from the second round to pick 30th overall they have fewer than three minutes in which to make this decision Radio City Music Hall has gotten loud again Adam Schefter can you tell us where the Jets might be going with this pick Rich, the Jets have traded up for Dustin Keller, the tight end from Purdue. Obviously, they have a situation with Chris Adam. Right now, but Dustin Keller will be the pick. Back to you, Rich. You like that, Dion? At a hey. Adam, Dr. Mayhawk over here. <laughs> Baby, we are killing it today. I am a passenger in this ride, and I love it. <laughs> what do you make of the pick, Mike Mayhawk? Do you like the choice? I love the choice because they're not good on the edges. They need wide receiver help. They don't see value there, but there is value with a vertical threat like Dustin Keller. He is not an inline tight end. They already got them. What he is is a former wide receiver, rocked up, running 4-5 <laughs> and catching everything. Caught 124 passes the last two years. And let me tell you something. When he gets the ball in his hands, he can go. All right. Fun times in Radio City. The Jets now, Giants next. In a trade from the Green Bay Packers with the 30th pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Dustin Keller, tight end Purdue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I told you Jet fans are, are really antsy when they hear a tight end picked in the first round. But again, Mike, we, this guy had some of the greatest measurables to come out of the combine. But year. what he has even more than measurables, unlike the guy that came out of Maryland and went number six to San Francisco two years ago, Vernon, Vernon, Davis. Vernon Davis, is he has unbelievable production. He's a rocked-up former wide receiver, 
great hands and run after the catch. He's not a blocker. Don't won't even block. He <laughs> won't block. I would underline won't. Can, you, can you make that any clearer, please? <laughs> Let's watch this guy. He's lined up <laughs> in line. You just saw an example. He will not block. Let's get away from that. This is what he can do. Great release off the line. Real quick. Nice step, jab step. Bow out. Catch the football. He's going to beat all kinds of linebackers and safety. Hey, Dion, show, tell me what you like about this, okay? I'm going to let you go right here. I like him. Turn around, get his head around upfield, make one guy miss, jump over, and he doesn't choose to run out of bounds. That's what I like about them. Look how quickly he gets on top of the safety, uses his body, makes the catch. In the slot, watch this catch, guys. He's in the slot. We're going to cut to an end zone route so you can see what kind of ball skills he has. Uses his body, pushes off, flips his hips. How's that catch? Great catch. I like that. I like but, that. Uh, let's, let's be honest. They got Bubba Franks to, to, to block. Nobody makes the Pro Bowl blocking. Here we go. This is turning into a Not passing league. league. I we all seen, know that. It is. You see the blocking tight end go to the Hall of Fame? No. Big receivers and basketball players play tight end in this league now. Oh, boy. So you saw a lot of the Giants fans are ready, the Jets fans, some of them pulling their hair out. The commissioner is about to choose it. Mike, what do you think is about to happen? It's got to be a wide receiver or a safety. Every team in the league is rolling coverages to Plaxico, effectively double teaming them. Or a safety like Tyrell Johnson from Arkansas State. Or, remember, we haven't had a University of Miami guy how about Kenny Phillips? So I see a wide out or one of those two safeties. And they can get another big wide out if they choose to go with Devin Thomas or Lyman Swede. And then the safeties, of course, those are the two positions that right. haven't had anybody drafted yet. Amazing run on tackles and running backs. But I think it's going to be another receiver. Devin Thomas you didn't mention. I think, I think Devin Thomas from Michigan State, who really it was a one-year wonder. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like Mendenhall. He's got some stuff off the field. He's a junior college kid. Another reason he might be sliding. Marshall, you're antsy. I, I look at cornerback here because they got lucky last year in the playoff. They lost a lot of guys. They had guys like R.W. McWhorters come in and play valuable time. Didn't get exposed. I like Although that. the young corner played well, you never have too many corners when you have a pass rush like what they have. And, and they could use a nickel corner. <laughs> Too late again. You and the commission. <laughs> okay, with the 31st pick in the 2008 NFL Draft, the Super Bowl champion New York Giants <laughs> select Kenny Phillips. Yep. Yeah. Kenny yeah. Phillips. And the streak continues. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> This is a big, good-looking safety for Miami. Guys, he's not Ed Reed, but he's a really good football player. Runs about a 4-5-40, three-year starter, good size, he's physical. He's don't expect Sean Taylor or Ed Reed. That's unfair to the young man, but he's a really good football player. I like him in the open field. Top of the screen, watch him add into the run game. When you add into the run game, you've got to be a sure open field tackler. One-on-one, -on -one, bang. Good hit, excellent tackle. Same play from the end zone. Watch him break down in space right there. That's excellent athletic ability. Just keep running your feet on the impact. Run support again. Look at him flow like a linebacker to the football. Big hit. Flow sees number two. Let's him go through, and then he's going to jump the inside route. Excellent job on the play side angle. Again, I think he's a functional <laughs> safety. He's going to start and replace Jabril Wilson. So uh, they just announced the terms of the trade for the New York Jets, and that means the Jets fans just learned that they have no more picks today, so they are leaving like Deion Where's Sanders Deion? is leaving. Wait, the, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. the commissioner is tapping out. The, co the commissioner and I, we have an important engagement. I, you know, I hate to leave you guys. You can't leave yet. We're not up. taking a break yet. I like really, a school bell. What do you have? The, the school bell ain't <laughs> ring yet.